Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my development diary for the game, Stormbreak. Dialogue that doesn't suck. As strange as it seems, the most difficult part of making this game of mine has not been the scripting, programming, art generation, or even debugging the converging paths of player choice options. The most difficult part of making the game Stormbreak is the integration of dialogue. Now I'm going to start this video off by saying something that will undoubtedly piss a few people off. Most of the dialogue in games, especially older games, is garbage. Final Fantasy VI, VII, Legend of Zelda, Resident Evil, just to name a few, all show signs of horrible, borderline lazy dialogue. The reasons for this poor use of this vital storytelling tool are manifold. However, some of the early justifications for this deficiency are long obsolete. Bad translations, insufficient hardware, and the fact that programmers tend not to be writers, all served as excuses in the past, but are no longer acceptable in the modern world, and I feel it is not acceptable for my work either. Modern computer and game systems allow, uh, alleviated the hardware limitations years ago, and rising budgets allowed the hiring of quality writers and translators. Yet, still, this problem persists in many titles in the modern gaming world, albeit to a lesser extent. In the creation of Stormbreak, I ran headlong into this problem and I will detail some of the techniques that I am using to overcome these difficulties. Because my game is inspired by Eastern role-playing games, my narrative structure is mostly derived from that format. So let's take a look at an example of dialogue you might find in this type of game. I'm cold. This dialogue example, while it perfectly and purely states the information to be imparted to the player, does it in such a crude, unnatural, and juvenile way that it tends to make my eyes roll whenever I see dialogue like this in modern games. That being said, simply complicating the speech is not the right answer. The frigid air sits heavily about me, cutting deep in my poorly protected body. My coat, made of no more than thin textiles, was of little avail. This is a much more convoluted way of saying the same thing, but admit it, it is kind of douchey and is the wrong way to go about dialogue. Worst of all, it adds little in the way of poetic value. Show, don't tell, is advice often given to budding writers, but is often misunderstood by both the people receiving and sometimes even those giving the advice. People tend to interpret this in a variety of ways often by stripping away dialogue, or even leaving out descriptions of things entirely. Decker's first line communicates exactly what he is thinking and allows the story to move on, thus abiding by the misunderstanding of the show-don't-tell concept. In reality, show-don't-tell means to use what are known as concrete descriptions as opposed to an overuse of abstract descriptions, which do not engage the reader's imagination. In the case of dialogue, this means that a character should rarely explicitly state exactly what they are thinking. Look at this example. It's freezing out here. All of Decker's lines are trying to convey the exact same thing. It is cold. However, the third line, while slightly longer than the first, is capable of making a connection to the player's mind as a physical feeling of cold, rather than just stating he is cold. The concrete detail allows a person's imagination to connect to what is being said to an experience. This connection is vital to making the reader feel like they are part of the world. This, of course, can be taken to an unfortunate extreme. The biting wind cuts straight to my bone like a frosted knife. On the surface, this line follows the rules of concrete details, but it becomes overly wordy and relies too heavily on experiences that people are unlikely to have had. I know for sure I've never been stabbed by a frosty knife, and I cannot imagine what that is like. I feel the safe assuming the same about you. Making this concrete detail in the direction of being more abstract and rather pretentious. Note, this good dialogue and monologue in fiction should not be confused with realistic dialogue. While it seems intuitive to make your dialogue realistic, the result is nearly always unreadable and rather boring. Uh, it's cold. The sad truth about human speech is that it is peppered with ums, uhs, mispronunciations, and incomplete sentences. This is true of even the most eloquent of people. We simply tend not to notice 
However, when these speaking deficiencies are left for us to read, they become obvious and feel wrong. Striking a balance between easy to understand dialogue and that which follows a poetic concept may not be easy, and I'm certainly not the individual that is best capable of doing that, but I'm definitely going to give it a try, and that'll be the end of the episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope to have another one of these up shortly.